Hi everybody, I'm Matt Storey from More Thompson Accountants. Um, today I'm going to talk about company cars. Um, so in the past, um, providing a company car to an employee has been a really good way of um, providing a award or an incentive to work harder. Um, but it has been um, something that has been quite expensive over the last few years and there's been variable myths about the, um, the tax laws in regards to company cars. So today I'm going to help explain that in a bit more detail and to clarify various matters in regards to that subject. So basically, how is a, a car taxed for a benefit in kind? Um, so how that is done is that you take the list price of the vehicle, um, including any extras that you may add to it, and you multiply that um, by a percentage, which is based on the CO2 emissions of the vehicle. Um, there's a standard um, CO2 emissions, um, which is provided by the manufacturer, manufacturer, and basically the percentage is dependent on the fuel type of the vehicle. Um, so it depends on whether it's electric, hybrid, diesel, or petrol. Um, if it's a diesel, they usually tend to be higher and they actually add a 4% supplement onto the charge. Um, there is a various new cars that are being produced um, if, um, with, which are diesel and if they are uh, meet the um, RDE2, which is the Real Driving Emission Stop 2 compliance testing, then that 4% supplement is waived. Um, so it is it can impact on some diesel cars, but if it meets that condition, then you don't add the 4% supplement. Um, so like I said, the lower the CO2 emissions, the more cheaper benefit in kind it is on the vehicle. So therefore, it is quite a, um, an interest um, to go towards more of a hybrid car or electric car. Now, the CO2 emissions on electric car is currently a 1%. Um, so that's a, a massive tax saving in terms of providing that to an employee. Um, for hybrid, depending on the zero emissions mile, the percentage can range from 1% to 13%. So some really important things to, to consider there when choosing what type of car to provide to an employee. Um, obviously, electric and hybrid is going to cost a lot less to the individual uh, and to the employer, but it may not be um, the type of vehicle that they want. Um, so what, what alternatives are there to a company car? Now, the, you could supply a van uh, to an employee. Now, that has slightly different rules compared to a company car. Um, a van has a flat rate of anything kind of three and a half thousand. Um, now, a van may not be such an attractive proposition for an employee, something like a transit, but there is some uh, rules conditions which means that something like a double cab pickup or a, a truck, such as a, a Ford uh, Ranger, might be deemed to be a van. Now, it is quite a subjective area, but some of the rules that HMRC state in regards to be classified as a van is that it must have a payload of a ton and the purpose that it must be primarily used for supply of goods and not for passenger related travel. So, I think it is a subjective area and I would take advice to ensure um, whether it does comply with a van but as you can see, it is quite a cheaper alternative to a company car um, to, to supply to an employee. Now, one thing I just want to mention is about the fuel element of the benefit in kind. If you're going to provide um, fuel for personal use to an employee, that again attracts quite a big benefit in kind charge. Um, it's a flat rate percentage, so it's not dependent on the list price, but that currently stands at 24,600 flat pr list price, um, multi multiplied by the CO2 emission of the vehicle, which we discussed earlier. Now, um, it is something to bear in mind that it can be quite expensive for both employer and employee, so it might be um, beneficial for the uh, both parties, for the employee to claim a mileage claim, on the, on the business mold and the employer to refund that to the employee. Um, in, re in regards to van, it is actually again a lot cheaper. It, again, it's a flat rate and it's a benefit kind of £669. Um, so again, a lot more beneficial to have private fuel in a van than it is in a car. Um, another thing I just want to mention there is that if you do not want to wish to provide a car or a van to an employee, you could um, talk about what's called a car allowance, um, a term that's um, bounced along quite long in, in the industry there. All that means is that 
the three, so say it's three and a half thousand, you want a supplies allowance, that would be subject to PAOI and national insurance through the clients, um, the employee's wages. Um, so it's not tax free, it would be subject to tax and I, but then what that means is that, that amount that they're given to the employee, they could go out and get any vehicle they'd like, they would be responsible for it, um, for the upkeep and everything else, but then they would be able to put, submit a mileage claim um, to the employer to claim for the business miles. So another way of looking at it there. Um, so something I haven't talked about just yet is the tax treatment of, of these various different types of vehicles. Um, with a car, the tax treatment is not so great. Um, if the CO2 emissions of the vehicle is more than 50 carbon dioxide emissions, then um, you get a write down allowance of 6%. Um, if it's lower, then you get a write down allowance of 18%. If it's a pure electric vehicle, you get a 100% ride down allowance. So if you went out and bought a Tesla and it was 50K, for example, then that whole 50,000 would be knocked off your taxable profits. Now for vans, um, it will qualify for the annual investment allowance. So again, if you went out and bought a van, 30,000, that would come straight off your bottom line profits. If it was brand new, um, yes, you would qualify for the super deductions of 130%. Um, which is a really great tax incentive which the government have introduced at the minute. Um, so as long as it's brand new, that was the amount of tax allowance you'd get on that vehicle. Um, just a side note, if you are looking to hire a vehicle so you don't actually own it, um, if the CO2 emissions of that vehicle is more than 50%, then for tax you have to restrict 15% of that cost against your taxable profits. So something just to consider there. That leads quite nicely to the, the financing side of the vehicles. Um, if you want to buy it outright for a van, yes, you'd get all that tax relief all up front. If you went to finance it on a higher purchase, again, um, you would be able to get the tax relief all up front. If you went to buy it on an operating lease, which I just mentioned earlier, then you're not deemed to own that vehicle because that vehicle would be going back to the supplier and therefore the tax relief you get on that is actually the, the rentals on the vehicle itself. So every time, every month you make a monthly rental and the advance rental, then you get the tax relief on that. Leading to last item now is VAT. Um, if you buy a van, um, then you can claim 100% of the VAT. On new cars or second hand cars, there's no VAT available there. Um, if you're going to be hiring, then you can claim 50% of the VAT of the rental, but onto the maintenance side, you can claim 100%. On the fuel cost, if you're providing the fuel to the employee, um, then you can claim 100% of the VAT on the fuel, but you'll then have to do a fuel scale charge, which basically is based on the certain emissions of the vehicle, or is a restriction on the VAT that you can claim, um, and the various rates are documented on the schedules provided by HMRC. So again, that's a bit of a lowdown on the company car situation. Um, it can be quite complex. So if you want to chat any further about this, then please get in touch with me at Matt Moore Thompson, um, phone number 01775 711 or my email address, it's matthewstory at moretea.co.uk. I hope you find that useful and um, hopefully speak to you soon. Thank you.